Hey, what is going on, everybody? Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Blake Benz Podcast. Uh, this is a podcast where if it's your first time listening to us, we talk a lot about business, we talk a lot about sales, marketing, life, really the whole shebang, and it's part of my company that I run and own called Good Advice. You can find us at www.goodadvicecoaching.com, and today I have a special episode for you. Last week, I had the opportunity to go and visit the U of A. I was given a chance to go and speak to some of their entrepreneurs entrepreneurial students who are partnering with nonprofits in the area. And what they're trying to do, if you're not familiar with some of the efforts of the U of A, they have this center that is called the Brewer Entrepreneurship Hub or the Entrepreneurial Hub. And what they do there is they have students who essentially what's happening is students in their classes are are finding solutions to problems in our Northwest Arkansas area. And they're looking for entrepreneurial answers to those problems. Well, I had a chance to go and visit with some of the students at that who are part of that program, and I was able to give some of my own insight and advice into how they can provide a better service to the nonprofits in the area. And since then, I, I've been very blessed and fortunate that the U of A was, because you know sometimes you give advice and you're not really sure how it's going to come across. I was very blessed and fortunate that they really enjoyed it and really appreciated that feedback. And also since then, uh, the U of A has now asked me, uh, one of the professors at the U of A has asked me back to share for a second time. So I'll probably have an update to this podcast again where I'll, I'll add on some more information. But really energized by today's topic. I love our nonprofit community. I think that nonprofits are critical for the good work and the influence we have in not just our country, but in the world. Uh, if you're not engaged with a nonprofit, whether you're volunteering in some way or uh, you're not giving financially, man, I, I cannot encourage you enough Life is so short and we can get so focused on just the here and now. You want to go beyond yourself and get involved with a nonprofit if you can. Uh, personally, like I mentioned, I love our nonprofit community. I've been working in the nonprofit community for quite a bit of time. They're not, they're not necessarily what I, I spend most of my time on, but just through the, the angle of business coaching, I've been engaged with nonprofits here locally for probably two or three years now. And I've, I've found myself time and again, working with nonprofits, trying to help them have a more successful business to have uh, help them run more efficiently. Uh, and it's been really fun doing that. Uh, last year, for example, with my old company, I got to partner with a few other organizations in the area and we got to run this nine month cohort uh, with around 10 nonprofits in the area. And since then, I've also worked with a multitude of other nonprofits, just giving direct advice to business owners or, or excuse me, to the nonprofit executive directors uh, and their board members since then. And so, Taking all of my experience with working with those groups of people, if you currently run a nonprofit or you are a volunteer at a nonprofit, or let's say that you're looking to get engaged, whether that's with your time or with your finances, and you're, you've been asking yourself, what are some things that make a nonprofit uh, successful, that makes their impact high and, and, and makes them an influential organization? I'm going to give you the recipe for how do you have a successful nonprofit. And in fact, if if you can understand these concepts, you can actually make any nonprofit successful. Uh, there is a multitude of Northwest Arkansas, that uh, a multitude of nonprofits here that the ones that I've seen go and be super successful all have these principles that are present in their business. So we're going to unpack this. We're going to talk about some of the things I shared with the U of A students uh, and also with some of my clients who happen to be nonprofit uh, owners uh, and just getting the terminology clear moving forward. You know, when I say nonprofit owner, I'm, I'm talking about whoever's behind the steering wheel. Because sometimes you have a founder who's since retired and moved on. In the nonprofit world, they sometimes use CEO. Other times they use executive director. Uh, all this to say, I'm going to break it down and give you just a few things that you can be doing to make 
literally any nonprofit successful. The first thing that that is probably the most important thing for you to do for your nonprofit, it's to stop treating it like it's a nonprofit. That's right. You didn't mishear me. The number one thing you can do for your nonprofit is to stop treating it like it's a nonprofit. What I mean by this is if when we talk about businesses, for example, there are certain things that are true about successful businesses. You know, successful businesses are willing to adapt. They're willing to innovate. Uh, they are. They have a real close finger on the pulse of what their customers want. And they feel they, they have a, a sense of how do we make this business model work? Because if it doesn't work, we are going to go out of business, right? In the same way, you have nonprofits who do not operate with a business mentality for their business. Now, right off the bat, and I've, I've used this phrasing before, and just like before, I've seen nonprofits pull away from this kind of rhetoric. I've seen nonprofits get very uncomfortable with this kind of rhetoric. I had a friend of mine who he was working with a nonprofit and he said, well, let's, we need to talk strategy about your nonprofit. And, and the person who was running this nonprofit got uh, visibly uncomfortable with this and said, whoa, we don't, uh, we don't like that, that phrase strategy. We're, we're not a business, you know, we're not a business. Let's, we, we care about people. We're not talking dollars and cents. And, and, and look, I get it. I understand it, but on the same token, I had a boss who shared this with me a maybe a few years ago, and it's always resonated with me, and it's, it's advice that I now give to current nonprofits. Your nonprofit status, the fact that you're a nonprofit, it is a filing status. It is a tax status. And that should be about as far as your thinking goes for your organization. Too many executive directors, they operate out of a nonprofit mentality. We're not supposed to make money. We're not supposed to be running like a business. Uh, in many cases, we are very empathetically driven. We're thinking about the people that we're influencing. And what I have found to be true is that you have a multitude of nonprofits who operate out of this nonprofit mentality rather than a business mentality. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying like corporate America. I'm not saying you're trying to make as much money as possible. I'm not, I'm not saying we're going from ditch to ditch. What I am saying is that there is a level of discipline and in regimen that comes to how you evaluate your own business, that if you don't have that in the nonprofit world, your nonprofit will not survive. You know, I mentioned the business owner who, or excuse me, the nonprofit owner who said, well, we don't like to use the word strategy here. Okay, well, well what word would you prefer we use? Because at some point we need to talk about strategy. We need to talk about things like, how do we make money here? And I'm not saying like make money like we're all trying to get to be millionaires. I'm saying that how do we make money so that that money can directly correlate with the people that we're serving? You know, where do we even spend our money? What's our long-term ma- uh, long term plan? How do we, do we have a brand and how do we build one and how do we leverage that? I mean, who are our donors? What does our donor management system look like? I mean, what, do, what does our process standpoint look like? And, and rather than ask these questions, I see two things happen. I see, first of all, I see executive directors or, or nonprofit owners who don't, who don't realize that they should be thinking these things. And the second thing I see is that I'll see these people who will hide behind their nonprofit filing status as an excuse for not doing these things. And it's kind of like, I mentioned this on LinkedIn a couple of weeks ago, that I'll meet a lot of startup business owners who the way they operate is even though they're having incredible dysfunction for their own startup, i.e., you know, we're out of money, we, we still don't have a product to put in front of our users, uh, I haven't paid my staff in six weeks. And as soon as I say, okay, this, this is dysfunction, this, this, is, this does not work. Uh, the owner will say, well, well, you know, we're a startup. This is what happens. And it's like, no, you're, you're a bad business owner, right? 
In the same way, I see a lot of nonprofit owners or executive directors or whoever who say something similar. They say, well, I mean, we're a nonprofit. And it's like, yeah, sure. But that doesn't excuse bad business practices that are keeping you from having the influence that you need to. And, and see, that's and that's really the point. We're not talking about, this is not like a, a rant against nonprofits. This is a plea to nonprofit owners to be overly zealous about the way you manage your business because your mission is so important. It is so essential to people you're reaching out to and trying to impact that you have to have that level of diligence for your business. I can't tell you how many uh, nonprofit owners I've spoken to who, who, for example, they don't know how much revenue they bring in. They don't know their annual revenue. They don't know their budget. They don't know how many, how much of their revenue comes from donors. And these are basic questions that you would expect any business owner to have. So if you're going to run a nonprofit, you're going to run it successfully. Do not think of it as a nonprofit. You have to think of it as how do I be a diligent business owner who I'm trying to create a model that can work on its own. It has It's a model that is sustainable and it can work long term. Another thing, another, another tip for you, if you're going to run a successful nonprofit, is you have to be a strategic thinker. Whether you're a nonprofit, for-profit, whatever, there has to be a level of strategy that's being applied that basically answers the question of how do we survive long term? A really great example of this would be a nonprofit that I worked with who we had found a way for them to bring in 15,000 extra dollars. And I said, you know what? If you guys did this, it would add 15 grand to your bottom line. I mean, what what could you go do with 15 grand? I mean, who could how many more people can you impact with 15 more grand? And I remember the owner kind of was like, eh, no, I don't think we're going to do that. And it was kind of like, uh, why? Why would you not do that? And the other said, you know, really, because we're a nonprofit, the way we operate is we only, we try to only bring in the exact same amount of money that we spend. You know, we're a nonprofit. We don't want people to, to see us as greedy or anything like that. So we, we only raise exactly what we need to spend, which is very admirable from like a, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's admirable, you know, I mean, it's clear that they, their motive is really to, to have the influence that they want to have and have the impact they want to have. The problem is that from a strategy perspective, it doesn't guard you against the risk of uh, unexpected expenditures in your business. So something that I, I often tell like brand new business owners is, look, it's going to cost you a lot more than you realize. Or I was talking with one guy who said, you know, we're going to get an awesome website put together. Uh, we're going to get business cards. We're going to get this set up. We're going to do some advertising. And I said, okay, well, how much money have you set aside for all that? He said about 500 bucks. And I, I think we can do all that for 500 bucks. And I kind of just smiled and said, dude, it's going to, it's going to cost a lot more than 500 bucks. I promise you it's going to cost a lot more. I mean, a, I mean, if you want a bare minimum website, Maybe, but a good one is going to cost you a thousand dollars or more. You know, it's going to be a lot more than you expect. And so when we talk risk, we're talking about the things that, that we didn't expect to affect us in our business. Another example would be, we have a, a very prof, uh, uh, excuse me, not, not profitable. We have a very popular nonprofit in the area that gives out significant grants to other nonprofits in the area. Well, if your nonprofit, if your revenue model operates exclusively on that grant, you're opening yourself up to incredible risk long term. It's like uh, I was talking with a, a good friend of mine who he he uh, the way his business operated was it was something like I think maybe thirty five percent was from this one one particular revenue generator. And one of his biggest strategies over the last couple of years was has been how do I reduce that percent ownership in terms of what's bringing in revenue? How do I reduce that from like 35% down to 20%? Or like when I was with my old company, we had a big, a big portion of our revenue came from like Walmart, for example. 
So how do we find other clients to subsidize what we're getting from Walmart? Because if tomorrow Walmart says, you know what, I don't want to work with you guys anymore, we're in a tough spot. So we have to be strategic long-term to guard ourselves against risk because we don't know what the future is going to bring. It's like the person who puts all of their money into you know, the delivery truck and then the truck breaks down. Okay, what do you do now? Your whole business model is it's reliant on that one thing. And so we find a lot of nonprofit leaders who just do not think long-term. Not only that, but you, we, you, a lot of times you find nonprofit leaders who just are not innovative. And it's, I think what's interesting about this is when we talk about just a business owner, business owners are the people who, when they think about the question of how do I be competitive in the marketplace, they naturally go to, okay, I need to innovate. I need to change the game. I need to play the game differently. How do I go to the next level? How do I look at this problem a different way? The perfect example, and everyone knows this example, it's Netflix and Blockbuster. If the game is played where people get out of their house and they go to my store and they have to rent something directly from me, and I'm going to charge you extra if you don't bring it back, you have another company that innovates and says, here's what we're going to do. Stay in your own house and on your own TV, on your own computer, we're going to find a way for you just to instantly play it. And you know what? We'll even send you a disc, a DVD disc, and you keep it as long as you want. No late fees. And we know how that story plays out. And so when we talk about business in the bottom line, you see a lot of companies that will innovate and yet for whatever reason, because nonprofits are often, they're not operating at this level of long-term thinking, what's happening is, is you're finding some of these same old problems. And here's what I see a lot of in, the, in, in our local areas. I hear a lot of nonprofits who say, well, you know, we're just all fighting for the same dollars. And like, that's, that is true. I mean, obviously, you know, no one's like asking the country of Canada to give them money. But at the same time, if you're not familiar with Northwest Arkansas, there is a lot of money here, a lot of money here. You got Walmart, Tyson, J.B. Hunt, all these other organizations. And so the the question isn't like, how do I be like, how do I get more money it's, it's how do I be more innovative to create a model that works long-term? And here's what I mean by this. I mentioned how I was at the U of A and I was working with these entrepreneurs and the, the whole category that we were looking at was food insecurity in Northwest Arkansas. And so there's this issue where in Arkansas as a state, 17% of people are food insecure, which means that they don't have the access to the uh, food that they need to survive. And it's in, in some cases, it's very literally, they, they cannot get food. Uh, they can't afford it. They can't get to it. They don't have time to get to it. Uh, or it's, it's they don't have specifically what they need based on their own like dietary distri- uh, restrictions. And so I don't mean like someone like wants steak every night and they can't get it. So it's not, it's nothing like that. It's people who literally can't get the basic necessities in terms of food that they need. Now, Arkansas is 17%. I think I read that Northwest Arkansas is somewhere between 13 and 16%. So it's, it's a, it's a lower percentage and it's different based on if you're in Fayetteville, Springdale, Rogers, Bentonville, whatever. Well, so there's 2,000, or not 2,000, there's 200 food insecurity programs in Northwest Arkansas. 200. 200 programs that are all doing something to solve food insecurity. Well, when we talk about this issue of innovation, I find myself working with these young entrepreneurs And it's funny because everyone has this idea that relates to food trucks and everyone loves food trucks. And so like every single entrepreneurial group is like, we need to get a food truck, you know, and we'll work with this nonprofit and we'll get them a food truck and, uh, you know, people can go to the food truck and, and the only like, and it's, and it's, let me say this, it's not a bad idea. It's, it's a fine idea. And and this model has actually worked in other major areas. Like, for example, when I lived in Houston, they had a food truck that came to the school. So when when uh, kids were leaving the school, they'd stop by the food truck and they'd get what they needed to take home uh, that night at their house. So the model, we, we know it works. And we, it's not a bad model. The problem is, is that not every nonprofit needs the answer of a food truck. And this is what I'm getting at when we talk about uh, how to innovate. 
and how to really think strategically. Walmart has a Walmart store within, uh, I think it's something like 92% of America, it lives within 10 miles of a Walmart, like some ridiculous stat. I mean, almost everyone is within 10 miles of a Walmart. And what I was talking about these entrepreneurs about was I said, you know, instead of like everyone needs to have a food truck, why wouldn't we innovate and leverage what's actually in our community? So we have like, we have like um, Walmart delivery. You know, if the Walmart, Walmart driver is already out delivering to one neighborhood, can they go, how much does it cost to go one neighborhood over and deliver to that one? Or we have a, a service locally called Easy Bins. And, and you know, if you order by midnight, now here's, here's, the, here's the free promotion for Easy Bins. So if you guys become super rich, don't forget about me. If you order by midnight, they will have it at your doorstep by 6 a.m. the next morning. I mean, think about, think about what, what goes into that. So can we not leverage a service like that? I'm not saying I'm, I'm not saying that the nonprofits need to create it themselves. I'm asking why can't they they partner with these? I mean, we we literally live in the area that Walmart was founded. They care more about our area than any other place in our country. Why can't we leverage that? We live in the in the greatest supplier community. I mean, I think about supply chain management. You know, if, if anyone has figured out supply chain management, it's this place that we're in right now. Why can't we leverage that to solve this problem? But see, nonprofits in general, and, and you know, businesses too, I don't want to... I don't want to make it sound like it's only a nonprofit. I mean, I get into conversations with business owners all the time where I say, you know what, you, you got to think long term about this. You got to think more, you got to be more progressive in your thinking on this. I mean, let's get outside of the box and really think about how can we, how can we ideate and, 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 and innovate and solve this. But I, I think it's one of those things where when you're in it for so long, it's hard to see outside of it and it's hard to really look at it in an unbiased way. You know, a, a way to, here's, here's another way to think of this. So these nonprofits were basically polled and asked, what are your biggest problems? And this questioning was basically around, okay, we're going to take the answers and we're going to start solving based on your answers. Well, these nonprofits were interviewed. I'm talking about the food, pro, you know, you have the 200 food programs. And I think it was something like maybe 50 or 60 actually gave their answers. Well, uh, looking at their answers, the two biggest problems that they self-reported was they didn't have enough funding and they didn't have enough employees or volunteers. The wrong answer to this would be to now design programs around fundraising and getting more volunteers. And in fact, it'd be a very superficial answer. When I was, was at the U of A last week, one of the the entrepreneurial groups, one of the student groups, what they had come up with was to solve this, and they, they had partnered with a very specific nonprofit, and they said, to solve this problem of not enough volunteers, we're going to go do like a big awareness drive on Fraternity Row or Sorority Row, where all the fraternities and sororities are, and we're going to do a big fundraiser to get their level of awareness up and get them engaged in volunteering at this nonprofit. And I said, you know what? It's a really great idea. Not a bad idea. It's a great idea. But it is a short-lived, not long-term sustainable idea. Because we we all know, I mean, <laughs> this, we're, we're people, right? And so what happens is we feel motivated. And it's like, man, I'm going to get I'm gonna get engaged in that. I'm going to put some hours in, in, in that. And then we go, you know, six months goes by and we get right back into... Uh, living our life the same way we were living it before, right? So it's not a long-term solution to the problem of food insecurity. And furthermore, it's I, I say it's superficial. The nonprofits don't fully recognize the problems that they're having, and I, I don't say that in a parental way. And, and again, I'm being careful here because I don't want to, I don't want to come across as as talking down about nonprofits. I'm not meaning to come across that way. I'm just I'm talking about the trend in the industry that I am seeing right now. So you have, you have nonprofits that are self-reporting that our two biggest issues are fundraising and not enough employees. Well, the funny thing about that is that, that those are the same exact problems that every other business since the dawn of time has had. 
I had a chance to interview about 150 business owners and I got to ask them, you know, what are your top five biggest problems? The number one and number two problems that they reported, like, and I'm talking about like these two problems were like 50 or 60% of the responses way over anything else. The number one and number two problem that they had was number one, we don't know how to make more money. And number two, we don't know how to get either more or better employees. So when nonprofits talk about we don't have enough funding and we don't have the volunteers or not enough uh, employees, that that's the same problem that everyone has. Everyone has that problem, right? I think about my own business. I would love to be a multi-million dollar business tomorrow, <laughs> you know, and I can finally pay my wife back from all the money she's given me to run to run my business. But see the 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 companies that make it long term are the ones who can see beyond those problems and they can innovate and elevate their thinking to really be competitive. Here's what I mean by this. You, you have every company in the world that wants to make more money, but rather than looking at, at it from that perspective, instead they're thinking, okay, how do I be more competitive? Or how do I make this easier for the people that I want to influence? Or how do I make this easier for the people who want to buy from me? Or from the nonprofit world, how do I make a bigger impact with the resources that I have? And so the lack of strategic thinking is actually what's keeping both businesses from being successful long-term, but also nonprofits from being successful long-term. And I think the, the issue isn't because uh, nonprofits are like poorly run. I think, I think at the end of the day, one of the biggest issues of all of this is that you have, you have nonprofits being run by people who don't, no one's told them this. And I know I'm, I'm broad brushing here. I'm talking very generically, uh, but, but I think what's, what's interesting to me is that a lot of, and here's a trend I've seen. I'll work with the nonprofit that is dysfunctional and then I'll look at their board and their board is being run by some of the most experienced, incredible people, like resume wise. These are people who are senior vice presidents, they're owners themselves, and they're part of really incredible businesses. And yet the, they, for whatever reason, the same tenacity that is applied for their own business isn't being applied to uh, the, the nonprofits that they're overseeing on their boards. And so you have, for example, someone who has a really incredible business, they've grown it, they've, they've put a lot of diligence to it, and yet when it comes to the, the, the nonprofit that they're helping, they're disengaged, right? And it's, it's I see a lot of, of nonprofit board members who, I think that's the word, is it's a level of engagement. It's a level of, um, am I really fully invested in helping these people make the strategic decisions that they need to make long term? Now, on the flip side, uh, I've met a lot of nonprofit executive directors who absolutely want to run their business more strategically and that the board is too engaged. You know, they're engaged in the day to day. You know, I, I worked with one executive director who she had uh, sent something out to one of her employees and and basically, oh, she had asked one of her employees to take on managing this element of the nonprofit. And the board member caught wind of this and said, well, why are you having that person do that? You shouldn't be having that person. This other person should be doing it. And the executive director was like, I mean, I, I see what you're saying, but but also I'm running this thing. You know, I, I, this is why I have this person running it versus this person. And so you have to trust my authority, my leadership, and let me actually do the thing that I want to do. And so, 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 you know, and it's interesting how board members kind of fall on either one of, of those sides of the, the equation of investment. And here's what I want to close with. One of the greatest nonprofits that I've worked with has been Ronald McDonald House Charities. In fact, I was in Kansas City and I was talking to a guy who he was looking to get involved in a nonprofit locally. And I said, man, you got to go check out the Ronald McDonald chapter. I mean, they are just, they understand how to run a business. They understand how to run a nonprofit and they're making really incredible uh, decisions that are leading to awesome impact in their community. 
Well, so the local nonprofit chapter here, what is so admirable, in fact, I'm going to have the CEO on the podcast here in just a couple of weeks. Uh, What's so admirable about them is that they understand two things. They understand how to manage their organization like a super successful business, and they have a board that is engaged in the right way. They have a board that is, they, they're curious and invested in the long-term strategy, and they're asking questions about that, but they're also allowing the, the leader of the nonprofit to have the autonomy to make the decisions that need to be made from the day-to-day. So if you run a nonprofit, if you're involved in a nonprofit, remember a nonprofit, it's a filing status. That's all it is. You still have to run your, your nonprofit like a successful business. How do you think strategically? How do you innovate? How do you stay engaged in the community? I mean, you have a brand just like any other business. And furthermore, if you don't have an engaged board, you got to get one. And that might mean, (laughs) I talked to someone who her nonprofit, it was board members for life. And it was like, eh. Some people, you know, they have to be lovingly told, thanks so much for your service. Uh, It's time to move on. And again, I say all of this out of love. I say it all out of a desire to see nonprofits continue to flourish and grow. Uh, I support local nonprofits. I'm excited for the local nonprofits to continue to grow in their impact in this area because, frankly, I feel like Northwest Arkansas is the greatest area in our country. And so I say all of this out of let's elevate in our thinking and the application of our business so that we can continue to make the impact that we need to make. Thanks so much for listening. As always, you can email me, Blake at goodadvicecoaching.com if you have a comment or you want to leave some feedback. Otherwise, I will catch you later. See ya.